Hello, this is Jake. Welcome to the beginning of this new series. I'm going to be building this landing craft from D-Day. This is a Raval kit. First time I've ever built something like this from Raval. I've done one or two vehicles, nothing military before. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. There's going to be a twist. This series, not only will I be building it, I will be RCing it as well. So this will, at the end of this series, be going to a pond and working in the pond, of course, across the water. But the doors are going to come down at the front and we're going to have an RC tank or truck, not sure yet, drive off the front of this landing craft. That's the goal, that's the plan. So let's get started with this series. Today, in this episode, we will be looking at just getting the hull ready for motors and, you know, electronics. I do want to get some of the plastic parts fitted to it, and then I can start planning around that, because I don't want those parts to get in the way. Um, so if I put them on, get the main actual base of the landing craft done, we can then um, sort the electrics out and we know what room we have. Um, shouldn't need too much room. It's a good size. I mean, there's the hull. It's a good size, so we should have plenty of room. So, yeah, let's get started. Right, so I'm just having a look at the instructions. Uh, they're going to be upside down to you because, uh, you know, I need to view them. Um, it's telling us to start off with putting the props on the bottom. Now, we're not going to do that because, of course, we're making it RC, so we don't need to mess with that. Um, all we're going to be looking at in this episode is putting the floor in, the sides and the back. Then I can figure out what room I have to put the motors and all that, the electronics. So yeah, that's all we're doing in this episode, is just getting the main look of the uh, deck sorted. I need to cut this bag open, and I do not have my scissors, so I'm going to have to use my scalpel. Um, I've been... Oh, you know, I've really wanted to start this project for a long time now. Um, I've had this for a couple of weeks, and I just really wanted to get started with it. There we go. Hello. Now, let's get started. So, like I said, we're only looking at the sides, which are these pieces here. There's one, and there's the other, and then obviously we got the back. I don't know if that's a stand for it to go on. Obviously we don't need the stand. Um, so let's get these pieces out of here. There we go. And of course I'll be putting all the detail on this model, even though it's going to be working in the water, it's still going to have all the detail and everything, because that's vital. So these go something like, I think like that. Something like that. Um, just have a look. Gives you an idea of the room. Where's the base? Let's get this base out and we can get a real look. So the base is on this sprue here um, with some other parts, mainly the door. Still got to try and figure out how I'm going to make that operate. Um, so let's get that off here. go so I can remember someone doing this on um, a TV show years ago and I can't remember what the show was called it was either model mania or something along that line um, and I will search online for it later but yeah we're gonna have a working tank as well or truck it's probably gonna be um, a Sherman tank uh, try and recreate D-Day a little bit with that um, because we can have loads of RC soldiers running on the side. Dog air gets absolutely everywhere. So this floor goes something like that and then we got both sides. So we're going to have to glue these parts together. So let's get rid of the HUD for a second. Um, let me just have a quick look at the diagram so it's telling me to let's just move that a bit put these parts on first could them 
my new pair of uh, snips before I started doing this project. I've got a shopping list of parts to get, tools, and it's just ever growing. <laughs> Every time I go to the model shop, I do try and pick up some at, like tour wise, because I am going to need it at some point. Um, I got these, so these are nail files. They cost £1 for about 10 on eBay. Brilliant for sanding parts off. And if you want to do your nails, you can do that too. But, uh, it's alright for bigger parts really, smaller parts probably not. There we go. So this goes on... Make sure I've got this right. Which one do we just cut out? Just double check. So we've done two first, so... this one. God, I can't get over the dogger. And she starts barking. Uh, that might be a common thing in this service. Right, it was not really important. It looks like a neighbour's having a parcel delivered or something. I might use my Reval glue for this one actually. Just because my Tamiya one doesn't seem to be working too well. To Maya, sorry. We do have a few glue marks, that's somewhere we can work with though. <sighs> Can't get over the dogger. There we go, so that's one. There we go, you see that? I just fitted that across that. It's bas basically um, like a um, an effect on the side of it. Um, it looks like there's Andor's to go on as well. D49 is going to be the smaller spring. See, I just saw the uh, rudders on that as well. But of course, we are not going to be fitting them. Not yet, anyway. Uh, even if we have to put our own on. Because it's going to be a working RC boat. But it should look pretty good, you know. I'm. I'm optimistic. It's gone. Now, I'm using the scalpel very close to my fingers here, but I, I, I very rarely cut myself with it. Um, of course, if you're a lot younger, probably um, best to, you know, uh, get some supervision. Uh, you don't want to be messing with sharp stuff unless you're supervised. There we go. It's nice to start, start something else because obviously I've done a lot of work on the Titanic wreck diorama which is now officially gone. Um, that is no longer my model. I did sell it. It sold straight away to um, a guy who goes to shows with a Titanic like exhibition and displays Titanic models. So it was really good to know that it was going to be going to shows like that. Um, I mean, I had a lot of people interested. I still get emails now, um, just seeing if I'm selling it. I'm like, no, I'm very sorry, it's sold, but this dog here. But yeah, it's really great feeling to know it's going to a proper Titanic exhibition and everything. Um, I'm really, really pleased with that. If you did not see the unboxing of this, uh, the unboxing will be the video before this on the channel, the way I uploaded it. Um, do check it out, you know. Uh, I do say about the Jeep, I'm not sure if there were two Jeeps provided, because there's only one in the pictures, but there's definitely two shells. Uh, one shell is pre-built, and the other's not. It's all going together quite nicely. The Reval stuff, I heard that they, they're going to be repeating a lot of models from the old days. Um, I don't know if that's true. But if so, yeah, that, that's going to be good. Because there are kits, like when I was younger and I never got. 
and I would like to have them to build now. So that would be good if they are doing that, and that's what I heard anyway. Um, they're re reissuing a lot of kits from the past. Um, also, I did think about doing some of the Apollo stuff when I was uh, released, like the rocket and everything. It's a lot of money, but I think done, built, sell it on, it'd be a great um, video for the channel. Because a lot of these models I'm building, I am selling on. Um, and I'm getting my money back on them, no problem. But it means I enjoy building it. And I can, you know, sell it on and then buy some hours to build. Um, so it's great. Like that Titanic, uh, I sold that for... It's not much, I didn't charge too much for it. Obviously I had to... How much time do I put into it and everything. But... Like I said, it's gone on to someone there who's really appreciating it, taking it to shows, and that's great. And then selling that paid for um, two two new Titanic models. Two, um, I got them on the other What ones were they? I've lost them already. They're in, in this shed somewhere, I promise you. Um, ah, there's one. Yeah, so they are both Reval 1700s. Um, and I'm going to be building a new Titanic wreck, so if you want to check that out, please do. Um, it, it won't be yet, of course I'll do a, um, what do you call it, I'll let you all know when it's going to be happening. But I am, I am going to be doing a new Titanic wreck. Because the last one was so popular, and I want to do something different this time around. Now, obviously the Titanic wreck's a lot smaller, because it's one seven hundred. Where the last one was one four hundred. Don't put too much glue on. Um, I'm going to have to look at paint for this as well. Because obviously it's going to have to be waterproof paint. Um, whatever you call it. I've never built a model that's gone straight into water. So I'm going to have to be careful that. Because I don't want to put it in the water. Takes paint off but we should be okay. Um, there we go, so that's both sides done. There the are part. Oh, actually, there's some that we go on the floor. We might as well put them on before we stick it all together. Even though it's very tempting. D40. Let's have a look. Let's move that to a side. D40. Where are we looking? Mine's gone blank. It's 39. Ah, 40 up here. So these are just ties. Where they would have tied, you know, the tanks down, strapped stuff down. So um, I don't know what motors I'm going to be using for this one yet. Um, obviously it's going to be twin motors. Because they were twin engined of course um, I, I'm, I'm gonna use you know a, a decent controller I'll probably use the one I use with my lorries my um, Porsche controller I'm gonna try and get another one of them uh, they've actually stopped producing them now so that's quite annoying because they are really good controllers they're like for the cost I think they're like 70 pound or something like that which is not bad at all. Very fiddly. Fiddly little bits. Um, I have considered doing a lost diorama as well. I thought it would be quite good. I've become a massive fan of the TV show. I'm not sure, I wasn't building all this, I'm thinking what tank as well should I do for this? Any suggestions, I'm open to any suggestions on this project, so let me know what, what tank would look good on this. I mean, I'm thinking Sherman, just because it would have been, Sherman's would have been quite common coming off these uh, landing crafts on D-Day. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking Sherman at the moment. But let me know. Like I said, I'm open to 
ideas so just comment below what what could I put on so of, obviously the picture on the box is a willy jeep um, just a you know a normal jeep um, I'm not a fan of the jeep and that's why I've not considered doing that um, yeah Right, let's put these sides together then. So, let's just do a test fit. Now, I'm just looking. So, this is where the ramp's going to connect. Now, where is the ramp? Let's just have a quick look at that. I might be doing this a bit too... There's no way I'd ever be able to drill those ramp bits. Let's, I'm going to cut the ramp out just to, you know, the door, just to do the size thing, really. Yeah, see, it goes like that. Yeah. I just think if I stick it all together like that, how would I get that the lift? Uh, not lift, but hold it in place, like on a hinge. I don't really want to be putting a hinge here. Um, this dog, <laughs> she's molting, and it's even getting in the workshop. Um, right, yeah, I'm just thinking about this. Because it's going to be hooked up anyway to strings that come down and lower the door with servos at the back on piano wire. Um, but of course what we've got to be looking at more than that is it's got to be hooked up. Now, I could drill very fine holes across here, but how would you get to the ones in the middle? So it'd only be connected by, yeah, the top two, which might make it a bit weak. Um... But it would be connected on the side here, so we might not have to worry too much about that. Because it would be connected there, so... Yeah. Let's put it together. I think we're going to be okay. I didn't even realise that. <sighs> Every model I've built in the last two months, I've got dog hair on. Sometimes, because it's a big item, like a big glue, um, sometimes I use tape to hold it together. Uh, just normal, you know, Tamiya tape, just to help it. I think it's meant to go to about there. And then that's some up. And then obviously the back bit goes on here. Um, which is the back bit on that one now. We'll put the back on now. Um, it does say to put ladders on it, but I can do that after. That's not a problem for now. Let's just get it so I can see how much room I will have for electronics. It looks like there is going to be nice detail in this model, though. And that's always good. And it's going to be great having an RC landing craft. And I am going to do it all on my own. I was going to get Mike to help me. But I got some hours planned to do with Mike um, at the moment. Yeah, it's a good size lot. I mean, that's the bed, so gives you an idea. Just play the waiting game now. I will edit this out <laughs> so it glues nice and tight and everything. Right, I think the glue's dried enough to give it a test fit in the actual hull itself. So let's just be extra careful. I'm not going to glue anything yet just because uh, we might have to maneuver some bits. Um, but there you go. So that's what I wanted to get done in this episode so we can see how much room we got. 
So let me just get some of that point with. Good old pencil. Um, so we're going to have two engines at the back here, dual. Um, and they will be on a slight angle. They'll probably come to about here and here. Yeah, there we go. I can draw on that, so that's good. Um, and then obviously the rudders as well. The rudder servo I'll probably put in the middle here, roughly. And that will control or link up to a bar that then moves these two rudders. Um, it was said that probably I would control one motor with one stick, the other with diff uh, the opposite stick, and then that way you can control the turn in that. But no, I want to get the rudders in. I want it to you know be quite realistic. So let's get the rudders in. We'll do all that. Um, like I said, we'll put a servo here that controls them. Uh, motors only got to be small little you know tiny motors, nothing too powerful. Um, this thing's not going to be wheeling its way across the ponds like my boat that I have come in. Um, yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, so, yeah, it's nothing too powerful. Then, for the uh, doors to open up on this end, um, we're going to drill it over through these two bits here and these two. I can still get to them, so that's good. And then we will put some bar in, fine bar, glue that in place on these bits and that should inch up and down no problem and then of course what we'll do we'll put a um, piano wire to one side of it and that will come down the side I'm hoping to get it inside here so before we put the uh, deck on that fills in these gaps around the sides uh, we can get the wire in and it come to a servo roughly down here this side or, or this side either way and that will control all the door. Um, so it, it seems pretty simple really. That's that's the plan. This glue's still not set, so I will take that out for a second. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we're gonna be doing. So I hope you enjoyed this first episode. Um sorry if I chat too much or you know, any feedback, just let me know what, what I need to improve on and everything. Um but yeah, I need to clean up my desk before I do episode 2. <laughs> episode 2, we probably will have a look at fitting the motors and servos. Um, and I haven't got them yet, so episode 2 won't be yet. Um, say a week's time, I'll probably get them by the weekend and we'll see. Um, but yeah, and I'll get the piano wire and we'll look at doing the door. We won't do the door until we've got the motors in. The door will be about episode 3. Um, I'm just waiting for this glue to dry. I'm going to put some stronger glue on it, I think, just to hold it. Um, but we should have plenty of room. I haven't looked at... Yeah, so there's quite a hut to be built up at the back here. Like, you know, a bit of a... Um, I don't know, something. Um, so we might have room to put the receiver in that, or the ESC, you know, the brain, the electronics system um that's not a problem if that don't fit in that we're still gonna have plenty of room in this area it's not gonna get too hot neither that's not gonna be a problem i will put some air rolls in somewhere um uh, realistic ducks uh so we don't have a problem with overeating um, but it's not gonna get too hot anyway I, I don't think it will so we'll get that sorted um so we got two servos we need two servos two motors Obviously prop shafts as well. Um, we will need prop shafts, of course, uh, which will fit down there. That shouldn't be a problem. Um, and then obviously the rudders and everything like that. But anyway, I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, please like, please subscribe. You want to see more on this series? Let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I'll get uh, filming part two as soon as we get the servos and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this project. Can't wait to see how it turns out. And yeah, I'll see you all soon in part two. Bye for now.